Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin with and by the name of Allah, the compassionate, merciful, and I testify that there is no deity to worship except him, and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave, servant, and messenger. And I ask Allah to guide my heart, my tongue, and my hands, and I seek refuge in Allah from misleading and being misled and from deceiving and being deceived. And I hope that there is benefit in this message for the messenger and for the listener alike. Um, of course, this is posted in response to a group uh, message or a group chat in FB, a private room that wishes to stay private. Uh, but this is on YouTube, and of course, meaning that a wider audience can hear this. And the question asked was why it is that some men like to uh, rank on or come down hard on single mothers, yet they'll still date them and then try to get them to uh, go down on certain standards because they are, in fact, single mothers. Um, and uh, there's one, there was a mother uh, in, from this particular culture uh, who posted and said that a man she's dating asked her to send her kids away to their father because he does not want to be, quote, responsible for someone else's kids, close quote. Um, and the question was asked why it is that some men from this culture, which is in Eastern Africa, continue to vilify and talk crap about single mothers. Uh, and they say things like high mileage, total loss, cheap, desperate, easy. Um, and so, uh, but then the questioner, uh, the one posting this and talking about the issue was also a sister. And she says to the men, if you want a free woman with no kids, then just don't pursue and go after uh, uh, a single mother. Instead, pursue and go after uh, an unhindered woman and get with it. But uh, she also mentions that she's new to the single mother thing and has been hit on and offended two out of three times by the perceptions um, that men have when they hit on her. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and answer some of this based on the experiences of another community from the same continent originally, uh, my own, but uh, different culture, different language, and about three-fourths of the time, different religion. Now, this culture is largely Muslim. So first off, I can't sit up and say that she should be dating, and I can't say that he should be dating. I would have to say that either they're going to get married and they can be discussing marriage and there is that stage before marriage where you discuss and you negotiate. But uh, we don't have just a boyfriend and girlfriend type relationship in our faith. You're interested in marriage or you're not. And then if you're interested in it, you negotiate and then later you get married or you don't. So I can't say that she's doing the right thing by dating, nor is he. What I can say is that if they want to negotiate marriage, then they have to put this on the table. And she would have to say, okay, look, I got children from a previous marriage. Um, now, that being said, I would say this, that there are going to be, uh, there, there are, are different types of single mothers, just like there are different types of single fathers. And then of those who are not single parents, there are different types in terms of what they're looking for. But I'm going to point out something that we learned about an African-American community, but it was only talked about from about maybe 2003, 2004, that, that it was more commonly talked about in the African-American community. And that is that there were uh, men who began to notice that they were only attractive to women who had kids. Um, they just were not even attractive to women that didn't have kids. And these could be men um, that were, they could be in their early 20s. So they would know women that don't have children and they would know women that do. But as they would say, if the woman didn't have kids, it was pretty much uh, a given she wasn't interested in them. So uh, that led to another type of movement which is not largely participated in by African American men. However, uh, this movement um, has a name MGTOW, it's M-G-T-O-W, it's an acronym meaning men going their own way, shunning marriage, and this was largely Caucasian men taking, uh, taking on this movement, but they would point to the gender conflict of the African American community for some of the information that they used as ammunition for their movement. They would say, well, in, in, in any case, 
many laws are in favor of women. And when the laws are not, the judges are still in favor of women in the case of a divorce. Um, there are states wherein if a man dates a woman uh, with kids, he can then be sued for child support later on, even if they never marry. Simply by having a romantic relationship and she has someone else's kids, he can then be stuck with child support payments despite the fact that he is not their natural father. And so they begin to realize that the society in general was sending women a message that they could behave any way they wanted to while they're young and pick up any kind of mileage, uh, any kind of um, uh, anything along the way. And that society would never pass judgment on them. But if men were to behave as loosely, of course, society would pass judgment on them. If a man had children and didn't take care of them and this was found out, he's a bum. And that's how men should be viewed when they don't make the effort. All right, take care, man. But uh, the society would invariably depict the single mother as a hero. And it is true that many of them do wind up having to be heroes because of the burden. But by the same token, these men picked up on the imbalance in the society and the way that the two were viewed. Now, from the African-American community, what was being talked about about 03 and 04, well, about 2004 and 05, uh, was that there were men, as I mentioned, who were simply not attractive unless the woman had kids, somebody else's kids. These men then began to say, wait a minute, so I'm not good enough to have my own children. That's what the message that they were getting from this. That I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough to have my own. I'm not good enough to be the natural father babies, but I'm good enough to settle for it when you need someone to raise somebody else's babies. No, thank you. So I'm going to say this to the men and to the women. There are single mothers who are single mothers, and it's not anything that they did. They were not out there just hoeing around with irresponsible, carefree guys and then popping out their babies. And then these guys run off and they start looking for someone else to take care of them. There are women who were married in good faith and the husband died or it, the, the marriage did not work out. Um, there are women like that. Every woman knows which one she is. And if some women uh, now subconsciously, every woman knows consciously, maybe not. But there's a way to tell. And I'm going to get to that. Now, for the men, there are men who um, th there are men who are uh, attractive to various women. And then there are men who are not attractive, period. And then there are men who are only attractive when uh, women get older and their tastes change. And there are two reasons, two types of reasons that a woman's taste changes as she gets older. There are good reasons and there are bad reasons. That's all we need to know. That's all the men got to know. Some women simply grow older. They learn more. So then they become, of course, uh, uh, they, their taste in men change because of what they know, whether they have kids or not. There are women whose taste in men do not change until uh, they see the consequences of the, uh, of the first type being their type in the first place. So it changes. Now, brothers, let me quickly, because I'm running out of time, say to you, if women are only attracted to you when they have children, yes, that means you're not good enough to have your own kids subconsciously at a very reptilian primitive level that we all have. These women are looking at you and saying you're genetically inferior, but since you're responsible, they'll take you when they have somebody else's babies. Don't settle. But understand, that means that they're settling for you, so don't settle. Now, the way you can tell if this is the case is that there will be women around you who have kids and who don't. And it's only the ones with kids that are interested in you. The other way you can tell is that maybe most of the women around you in your age have children. So the way you can tell then is this. If the women, only women with small young children who are still very dependent and who would have to take time and attention away from you because they don't have a choice, are the women who are interested in you. And when their children are older and more independent, they don't want you. Then you know you're just you're you're being settled for. That's how you can tell if either one of these is not the case. There's a variety in this. Then that means, you know, there's a variety in the kind of women that are attracted to you. Then you're not being settled for, per se. You're genuinely attractive to these women. So you can then make a choice. Ladies. If your type of man uh, is completely different before you had kids than what it is after you have children. Then. Do not change what you want after you got babies.
Now, let's say you got married. You didn't fornicate, but you still married a no good ninja. He was carefree, um, irresponsible, thugging it out. Please do not change what you want after you got babies and decide you want a responsible man. No, a responsible man knows he's responsible. If he determines that you are only attracted to him because he because you now have this responsibility of some other man's kids, he's going to run. He's not going to tolerate it. Now, if he is subconsciously aware, he may stay. But when he consciously becomes aware of this, he's going to leave you. And he should. If you were married in good faith and your type in men hasn't changed, but your first husband just turned out to not actually be your type. That's a different story. Don't change your type, per se. Just look for someone that actually is that type. And generally speaking, I would say this, though, at a young age, especially generally speaking. A man, a single father is better off looking for a single mother. And someone who is not a parent generally should look for someone who was also not a parent unless, of course, somebody cannot have children and they know that they have to look for someone with kids. That's a different story. But if both can have kids, generally speaking, a man who does not should look for a woman who does not and vice versa. And a man who does have children should look for a woman who does have children and vice versa. Generally speaking, I hope that this message has been a benefit. Salam alaikum.